Yeah, okay, okay. And, and, and you mentioned, you mentioned pain in, in relation to, to, to the risk of nerve damage, but of course, discomfort and pain is likely to, to, to be a factor um, after, after hip replacement. And, and, I, and I know for some people, there's a concern that, well, what if the pain after surgery is actually worse than, than the pain I'm experiencing, than the arthritic pain I'm experiencing before the operation? And mm. What, what, what kind of things would you would, would you say if you know, when asked that kind of question? Yeah, so I mean, I think if you know if if the the hip pain is because of hip arthritis or, or a hip specific problem, which is you know which causing this really bad uh, you know, quality of life issues, um, and the diagnosis is correct that that's where the pain is coming from, then a hip replacement you know is a really really uncommon to have significant problems with pain afterwards. Mm -hmm. When, when we see patients in the clinic that come that have had hip replacements um, and the x-rays look great, you know, we said, well, there's nothing wrong with this hip replacement, not an x-ray, but the patient still has pain. The things that are running through your mind are, well, is the pain coming from somewhere else? So was it actually coming from the spine all the time? You know, damp problems with the spine, slip discs can cause pain mm -hmm. into the hip area. Um, referred pain so it, it might have been that that was actually the main cause at the beginning and the hip wasn't never really the problem even though they might have had some arthritis mm -hmm. um, equally maybe it's a knee problem um, probably a bit less commonly or is there a muscle problem around the hip um, that's, that's causing the pain before the surgery so kind of you know inappropriate surgery in inverted commas um, and by that what I mean is actually you know that that although they had arthritis that wasn't the main source of the pain before the operation so you do a hip replacement and the pain they were getting from arthritis goes away but they're still left with that other pain because it was coming from somewhere else mm -hmm. so, so that that's kind of one group of patients so you know being very clear and certain about the diagnosis before surgery is obviously important mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then you have some patients who have who have chronic pain chronic pain is a really difficult a difficult um, uh, problem, uh, very difficult to understand, very difficult for a, a lot of clinicians to understand and difficult for patients to understand. So you might have someone who's, who doesn't really have much arthritis, you can just about see something on x-ray, but they have really, really severe pain. Maybe they've had it for ages, they've had lots of injections, maybe they've had you know, some arthroscopies or something like that. And you know, actually they've got really severe pain that's sort of out of proportion with what you can see on the, on the, on the x-rays. Um, and it might be in patients like that, that actually their nerve fibers are not working properly right. um, and their nerve fibers are firing as if they're being stimulated by pain. So they're feeling pain. It's not, you know, I'm not saying it's in the head, but it, the nerves are firing to say, I've got pain, but actually there's nothing wrong in there, which is causing that. So if you then replace the hip, you're not replacing all the nerve fibers. Yeah. So the hip pain can look fine, but actually the nerve fibers are still firing. So you've still got pain. Um, so that, that they're quite rare those patients, but but there are some patients like that. So that's important to kind of to be clear about you know, this relationship between the actual physical or pathological problem within the hip yeah. and, and what problems it's it's causing. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then obviously you've got patients who've had um, you know they've had a hip replacement, you know, um, and, and and everything was great. They got rid of that pain that they had before, but but then suddenly they've got a different kind of pain. Mm. Um, and you know it could be you know we, sometimes we see patients who have um, tendon irritation on the implants that, that can occur so particularly in the socket there's, there's a tendon at the front of the hip the psoas tendon which is one of the, the hip flexors that can sometimes rub on the front of the socket if the socket is sort of jutting out if you like it's not covered by bone and, and that can be really painful and, and kind of limit patients in terms of their their hip flexions are getting out of a car or getting out of a curve, going up a curb, going up stairs and things like that, quite specific symptoms. Um, and, and again, the, the, the x-rays might look completely normal. So you know, they might go back to the surgeon and say, well, this is great. It's, it's okay, but I've still got that. Now I've got this other pain. It's really debilitating. I can't join my rambling club again. Um, the x-rays look normal. They do blood tests look normal. The bone scans look normal. You know, everything is fine. Um, so there are these sort of specific, um, you know, things that can cause pain that, that people we need to be aware of that people people don't get missed essentially. Yeah, yeah. But, but I guess it's also worth again flagging that for most people the arthritic pain 
is successfully treated by the hypoplasia. And Absolutely. So that's why at the beginning, you know, yeah. so I, yeah. I said at the beginning of the conversation, you know, there's a 90 to 95 percent chance that you'll get excellent resolution of your pain. You'll get really good quality of life back. Um, and then after all of this, <clears throat> all of this discussion about all the horrible things that can potentially go wrong, you know, patients like, oh, they were quite happy at the beginning and now they're, oh, crikey. But, you know, I kind of tend to come back and then at the end and say, you know, we've talked about all these percentages. What I really want you to try and remember, if there's a 90 to 95% chance of it going really well and you'll be fine. But, and there is this, you know, there's this small chance of a problem. Most of the problems that can occur, there are, there are treatments for, some of them might require surgery, but the surgeries can be quite successful. You know, there's a very, very small chance that you will genuinely be worse than you are now, yeah. but it's possible. 